if you own a gaming mouse and you use Linux, you probably want to be able to configure it. Especially things like your DPI so, you know, you can actually hit things on your screen and not completely overshoot them. Or you probably also have macro buttons as well that you want to configure to something that actually makes sense for the games you're trying to play. There is one slight problem though. I don't know of a single gaming mouse client that actually runs on Linux. Maybe you could get the client running through something like Wine, but because of how different the mouse drivers are on Windows and Linux, I really doubt you'd actually be able to detect the mouse, and if you could detect the mouse, actually configure it properly. Luckily for you though, we don't actually need those official clients, because a lot of gaming mice are supported by one really interesting program. That program is named Piper. Technically they're not supported in Piper, Piper is just a GUI interface for a daemon known as Libratbag, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna say Piper because using Piper is much much easier than working with the daemon directly. Now, I only own this one mouse right here, the Logitech G305 Lightspeed, and from what I've seen, I can configure everything without any challenge whatsoever, and most of the Logitech mice should be supported, at least most of the ones that anyone would actually care about. Outside of Logitech, it is kind of hit and miss which ones are supported, but a lot of other mice definitely are. The reason why I mention this though is because there might be other things available on your mouse that I can't configure on mine just because they just simply don't exist. Things like setting RGB colors because this is a very boring, I know it's baby blue, but this is a boring mouse that doesn't have any RGB. So with my mouse, you get two screens. You get resolutions and you get buttons. This is basically the bare minimum you're going to see for pretty much any gaming mouse. I didn't go and buy something expensive because I just really didn't care. I wanted something wireless, but I didn't care about all the extra bells and whistles that a lot of gaming mice definitely come with. Anyway, we're going to start with the resolutions. So this is where you're going to set the DPI. This is a fairly common feature for gaming mice, but my mouse comes with multiple DPI profiles, and then a button right here to actually change between those profiles. The general idea with this is like, if you're looking around, you have one DPI, and then you look down your scope, you'll have a different DPI. That's usually what it's used for. I never actually change my DPI though, I just always run it at 800. But if I wanted, I could go and set it to 12,000, and... Okay, that's really difficult to control. Let's try and set it back to, there we go, 800, and uh, there we go. So all of these different profiles can be changed completely independently. So let's say I want the 401 here set to something like, I don't know, 3600. So when you actually move this slider, it's going to move in intervals of 50 DPI. And the minimum and maximum DPI it shows in here is very much going to depend on what mouse you're actually using. In my case, it ranges from, I think the minimum is 400. No, minimum is 200. And then the maximum is 12,000. But you might have a mouse that is minimum 400, maximum 8,000, for example. And it should let you set it to whatever that range actually is. I know it wasn't always the case with older gaming mice, but a lot of the newer models do have onboard memory. So if I was to go and set this to 800 and then go and save that, it should be saved to my mouse. Now, obviously I couldn't confirm that without going and restarting this system, but I have gone and used it on my Windows install and everything I've set up has been working exactly the same way as it's set up on Linux. And you can also fiddle with your report rate or your polling rate, whatever you want to call it. Basically, this is how many times a second the mouse will tell the computer where it's actually located. So setting this to 1000 will make it smoother than setting it to 500. But what you like it to be set at very much depends on personal preference. I believe there's also a pull request to bring in 250 hertz support as well, but that's currently missing. Now let's go and have a look at rebinding. So, I don't have that many buttons on my mouse I can actually rebind, but there are a couple of things you might notice in here. So on the side of my mouse, I've got these two buttons here. One of them is set to backwards. That's the default binding. Usually that's going to be things like if you're in a web browser, it'll go back in your history. And the other one by default is set to forward and it'll go in the other direction. I don't like it to be set like that though. I recently tried having the jump button on my mouse and I actually kind of like it. So now this button right here has been changed to that. But we can go and set this to whatever we want. So we could even make this say another right mouse click button for example. If I go and apply that and apply it up here, 
if I then click that button. Now, if I just show you, if I click that, it's going to do a right mouse click. So there's other things we can do as well. We could have like a special mapping, things like a double click or a wheel left, wheel right, wheel up, uh, a ratchet mode. I'm not sure what ratchet mode is. That might be something that isn't supported on this mouse. Or I could go and cycle through the DPI resolutions, but I don't really care about having any of those. The one thing that I use it for is for the last option, which is send keystroke. This basically lets us go and have a macro binding on that button. How long that macro can be very much depends on the mouse you're using. Every mouse obviously is going to support a single macro button, but some out there you might be able to send like a really long chain of key presses as well. So if I go and click on send keystroke and let's type out say hello. If I go and apply this, it's not going to complain if anything is wrong, but if I click apply up here, as we can see, something went wrong, the device has been reset to a previous state. So in my case, I can only use a single button click. If I go and click on that again, and now go back to this, and let's just send, I don't know, the letter H. Click apply, click apply up here. Okay, that worked perfectly fine. And if I then click up here, if we go and press that button, as we'll see, each time I do so, it prints out an H. If you do have a mouse with more macro buttons, you will be able to configure all of them, not just two of them like you see here. Now, there are going to be other buttons we can rebind as well. Maybe not all of them, as we'll see in just a bit. So, the middle mouse button can be rebound like any other macro button. So, I could go and set this to a keystroke if I wanted, or literally anything else. I could go and rebind the cycle resolution button. I don't know what I would set this to, but I never actually use this button. So maybe I could find an actual use case for it. Now, in the case of your left and your right mouse click, at least on my mouse, I can't go and rebind them to whatever I want because that would basically brick the mouse if I set it to something and just didn't have a mouse click. So in this case, if I go and click one of these buttons, what I can do is go and swap the mouse from being left-handed to right-handed. Now, because the macro buttons are on the left side of the mouse, so they're in a spot to hit with your thumb, if I was to set this to be left-handed mode, hitting those macro buttons would be really, really difficult, but the option certainly is there. So if I go and apply that, uh, let's go and undo that. So now I have to click my right mouse click to left click. Now I have to right click again and apply. That is really... I, oh God, okay, I <laughs> did the wrong button. There we go. Now it's back to normal. You may be wondering if your mouse is actually supported, so I'll leave a link to this in the description down below. As I said, most of the Logitech devices are supported. It's not guaranteed that everything is going to be, but things like the G502, the different variants of it, the G305, and a lot of others are supported. In the case of SteelSeries, a lot of the main SteelSeries mice are supported as well. A couple of Rockout mice. Uh, there's also some stuff in here from companies I've never actually heard of, things like Glorious Mice as well. If your mouse currently isn't supported, I would recommend going and submitting an issue to the GitHub and seeing what can be done. If it's from one of the companies that is already listed here, it is probably going to be easier to support it because there likely is already a driver to make it work. If it's from a different company though, whether that's going to happen is very much up in the air. Maybe it will in the future. I don't think there was any Mad Cats mice on here. No, not from what I can see. So maybe there's just not a driver for those because I know even though they are ridiculous mice, people do actually use them. But one company that is really, really popular that isn't actually supported is Razer. Now, Razer is a really interesting company with the way that actually makes its mice work. By makes its mice work, I mean, I don't know how they managed to make their mice so confusing. So when you own a Razer mouse, it creates like a virtual device under Linux rather than being like a regular device like everything else. But you're not out of luck. There is an application made specifically for Razer. That is called Razer CFG. Once again, not everything is going to be supported, but the main mice you are going to care about, things like the Naga, the Mamba, the Death Adder, are actually supported. Razer CFG and Piper certainly aren't going to be perfect solutions to actually getting this configuration actually working. 
but having some form of configuration is certainly better than nothing. And if you're in the market for actually buying a new gaming mouse you want to use on Linux, I highly suggest going and checking over the supported devices list and buying something on the list that you know you can actually configure. While you could always go and set up like a Windows VM and configure it in that, that's a bit of a hassle and having it actually work on Linux would be much, much easier. If you are looking to install Piper, it is a very popular application, so it should be available in most standard repos. I can't confirm for everything, but what I do know is it is available in the standard repos on Arch Linux. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you already know about this application? Am I just wasting your time here? Or did you learn about something really cool that is going to save you a lot of effort in actually getting your mouse configured? Let me know down below. And if you like this video and you'd like to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please do go check out my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave pay, all linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And then this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's it for me and I'm out.